Hi guys. It's been a while. Um I don't know. It's I want to say a lot has happened. Um and a lot has happened. But at the same time a lot hasn't happened. And I don't know if that even makes sense. Um I guess I'll start sort of at the beginning. Um I've been in Japan for what, eight months now? And I love it. I love it here. I really do. Like, I tried to love Korea. I did. I really, really, really wanted to love Korea. But every time, just shit kept happening. And it wasn't like, man, my life is shit. It was stuff that happened because I was in Korea. So, I mean, obviously, I don't hate the country on principle, I don't hate Korean people, I don't hate people who go and love Korea, but for me, Korea ended up being a pretty miserable experience. And if you want to see a really clear picture of that, check one of my videos from the beginning of this period. So check like March of this year. You're going to notice something pretty drastic, aside from the fact that my hair was longer. The shape of my face. At the beginning of this year, my face was very round and full. And these were gone. And there's a reason for that. I was 24 pounds heavier than I am right now. Okay? 24 pounds. I don't even want to do the math on what I actually weighed in pounds when I left Korea. I weighed 71 kilograms. Please don't tell me what it is in pounds. I really, really don't want to know. I weigh 50, 58 kilograms now. When I left the U.S., I weighed about 52, 53. So I'm still nowhere near where I started. But I'm a hell of a lot closer than I was. And... It wasn't because I wasn't exercising, and it wasn't because I was eating badly, although I wasn't eating great. Hard to eat great in a country where you can't eat a lot of the food, and I mean a lot of the food. Um, it was mostly because I was so unhappy. Just my... By the last year, I was just so done and so unhappy with everything. Myself, with my social life, with my work experience, just everything made me miserable. And even though I came here and immediately had a negative experience, uh, I was fired <laughs> from my first job in the first, after two months, um, which I'll get into. And even though I didn't have a job, I didn't have steady work until August, so from through all of June and July, I had nothing. And I did some work in August, and then I started a job in September, um, which I'll also get into. Uh, so even though there was this horrific period of not having a job, and not having an income, and not knowing where to even start, and if I wanted to do teaching, because getting fired again made me just sort of doubt everything that I've been doing for the past three years. Like, the first time you get fired in Korea, it's almost a relief. The second time you get fired in Korea, it sucks. The third time you get fired in Japan, makes you go, Jesus fuck, am I really that bad at this? Um, and saying it like that sounds like, yes, yes you are. You're a terrible teacher, obviously. But, over the course of the summer, and as I've started this new job, and I'm remembering these things that happened, and the first getting fired from Global, like, I had no chance to start with. They fired all their teachers. All their teachers. I knew seven people 
consecutively fired from Global. I think the longest one to last was James, and he was probably only a few weeks longer than Richard. Like, Global fires everyone, because they're fuckers. Um, the second time I was fired uh, was not, it had nothing to do with me. It had nothing to do with me. And I know that because my boss told me so. Um, the day after she fired me, she took me out to lunch and told me that her marriage was failing. And that her husband went out driving all night long so that he wouldn't have to come home to them. And that she was raising her son, who was, in my opinion, a fucker. Um, <laughs> this kid was way, way too high up on his horse. Mm. And that because of all of that, she had let pretty much everything else go. And that was why my rent didn't get paid for four months. That was why my she didn't want to pay me my vacation, why she ignored contract, like, I mean, I can't, I resent her for it, I understand it, but I still resent her for it, and I wish that she had been more honest with me about that, which I realize is kind of a lot to ask from a supervisor to tell their foreign employee, like, hey, I'm sorry, I might be kind of out of it, my marriage is falling apart, like, I really, I wish... I wish we'd had the kind of relationship where she felt like she could tell me that because I think it might have helped us both. Um, third contract I completed just fine, uh, which at least gave me a little more confidence back. Like, maybe I'm not crap at this, maybe it's not my fault. And then I got fired from River City. And then, in August, I'd been hearing little bits and pieces what exactly happened, because it was very, very abrupt, like, I went through work week, I finished up on a Saturday, things were awesome, my boss goes, hey, can I talk to you for a sec, I'm like, sure, and he goes, we're letting you go, like that, no warning, no talk, no written anything, like, not a zilch, no hint, I had no clue that this was coming. Turns out, pretty much nobody did. Um, <laughs> they told some of my coworkers before they told me. So they told Katie they would be firing me before they told me. Um, here's what happened. In April, after bearing the cost of my medications for one month, I quickly realized it was going to be very expensive and much more than I could afford. So I started to talk to my doctor about options. In the US, when you are taking prescription medication, there are brand and there are generic. And it's usually the same chemical, it's just if you buy brand, it's expensive, generic, not so much. And I have national health insurance. So, but I wasn't sure if they do that here. So I said, you know, these are kind of more than I can afford, but obviously I need to take them, so what could I do? And he told me that I could apply for this certification, which basically says that I am the only income in my household, household being me, like, they call it a self-support certificate. And all it really does, it says that I have a chronic condition that requires regular, consistent treatment that is beyond the scope of my income, so more than I can afford. And once uh, a physician who will be administering this treatment signs off on it, says, yeah, this is all true, yeah, it's a condition, yeah, this is what she takes, this is the pharmacy she'll be going to, he told me they would probably cover up to 30%. Um, I thought 30% was a little bit hopeful, considering it was my second month in the country. I didn't, I'd, I think I'd barely had an income, like, taxed at that point. Um, so I wasn't, I was hopeful, but it was like, uh, I got complete coverage for two years. My certification covers 
all of my, my bipolar and anxiety and panic treatments and medications. If I need blood tests, it's covered. If I need random medication intermixed as a result of this, it's covered. Every doctor's visit to this guy, covered. Completely. I pay nothing. For two years. And yeah, this wolf, she's about to fall off the bed. You're asleep and you're limp. Um, it's getting long already. <laughs> um, and they refunded me for everything that I paid for my medication up until that point. To get this certification required an incredible amount of Japanese. My physician does not speak English. His nurse does not speak English. Um, I go through my appointments entirely in Japanese, and that's not bragging because my Japanese is shit. He's just an incredibly patient doctor. <laughs> um, he's a very, very nice man, but the paperwork was far beyond the scope of what I could do, and there were numbers I had to call, and there were people I had to talk, like I had to ask about these different forms, and it was just way more than I could ever do by myself. So. I took it to our receptionist, Keiko, one of them, and I explained what was what I was trying to do and what I needed it for and what she would have to tell the health office when they called her, when she called them. So she called them for me and she explained everything and she wrote out a list for me so I got, like, I knew what I needed to get and needed to do and things were grand. Um, and then, like, a day later, my boss asked me about the bipolar thing. And I kind of expect people to not understand bipolar disorder because media portrayal of it in particular is notoriously inaccurate. Like, bipolar disorder doesn't make you lose, like, I'm sure it does in certain cases, but for most people, bipolar disorder is a mood disorder. It doesn't affect moral like moral anything really like when you're manic you don't think murder's okay like that's not that's that's CSI bullshit don't even like it doesn't affect your moral judgment it may affect your social judgment like you might be which, which mine does like I'm much much meaner <laughs> when I'm manic but that's a social thing. Like, I may bitch someone out, but I wouldn't smack him in the face. I'm not an idiot. So, he asked me, and I'm not even exaggerating, these are his exact words, so would you ever come in and punch a child in the head? And he's asking it like a serious question, and I just gave him this look and went, no. No, I would not. Not even on my worst day. And thankfully, it's managed. Like, for the most part, it doesn't affect my life anymore. It hasn't in a long time. Like, yes, I still have manic episodes. Yes, I still have depressive episodes. But they're blissfully brief, and they're blissfully scarce. Like, compared to five years ago, I'm fine. I'm fine. So I explained to him what it was, and I explained to him that because I take medication, I'm normal. There is nothing weird about me. I don't do weird things, like, I don't think weird things. I'm normal. It's fine. And I thought he got it. I thought he understood. So I thought things were grand. After this conversation, within a week after this conversation, he calls up my friend Elizabeth. She's the one that's worked at this school. She was the one who got me in touch with them. Because we were friends from high school. And he told her to call my parents in America and tell them that I was sick and that they needed to convince me to come home because I was too weak for Japan. Okay. Before you go, Japanese man, this is an Australian guy. Okay. Yes, he's lived in Japan for 25 years, so he's a little bit not like your usual Westerner. But he should fucking know better, okay? That is not cool. She refused. 
obvious. That's bullshit. Shortly thereafter, uh, I was fired. And you want to know why? I, nobody knows. Bipolar. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. The only thing he gave us. Bipolar. So, first time I'd ever experienced mental disorder discrimination. But I didn't get this information until close to the end of the summer. So, first part of the summer was spent in a complete identity spiral. Like, I was like, I'm never going to teach again. This is bullshit. I'm not good at it. People hate it when I teach. I get fired. Like, I suck. I gotta find, I gotta find something else. Like, Maybe I can, like, wait tables or some shit. I was just kind of desperate and kind of done with teaching. Um, and as this information started to come back, no, it had nothing to do with my teaching. It had nothing to do with anything. It was just someone being irrational. Then I sort of came back to it, and I interviewed with Model Language Studio. And I'd been looking at their ad postings for years. Years. They teach English through drama. So they use theater principles and drama to teach English. They put on plays every year. They, they do as much directing and script editing and casting and everything as much as teaching English. It's all together. It's all connected. It's really hot in here today. The heat on my chair. Um. So I applied uh, because you could only apply from within Japan. I applied, went to the first interview, um, and David said that they get over thirteen thousand applicants from that post alone. And I thought, wow, like. I am incredibly lucky to have even gotten the first interview. And then they asked me back for a center, second interview. And um, normally that's a group one. But I was the only one there. And they just said that nobody else could do this day. So I did the interview, and it was a, like, they did a quick and dirty training, and I had a ten minute lesson from what they taught me, which basically was just to see if I could be taught to teach, basically. Um, and they offered me a job on the spot, which apparently they almost never do. And out of the 13,000 applicants from that ad, I was the only one they hired. That's a pretty big confidence boost right there, right? Um, so yeah, so I started working for them, and I really, really enjoy it. I mean, there are days when I'm like, but for the most part, I really like it. Um, the kids are good. The curriculum's good. The plays are so much fun. Just, I forget how much I love drama until I'm doing it again. And being on the directing side this time, it's so much fun. Just getting to pull these moments out of these kids and get them to understand what they're saying and what it means and how it relates to everyone else. And even if, like, these are, they're not complicated plays. These kids are young. These are, like, silly little things. But it's ten minutes of them talking to each other and understanding each other and communicating a story and just being in it. And it's wonderful. Unfortunately, my health has taken a rather drastic turn for the worst. At the end of August, I briefly went off my anxiety medication because I seemed to be doing okay, and we thought maybe I didn't need it anymore. Um, three days after I stopped taking it, my blood pressure absolutely crashed. It dropped so low. I couldn't stand up for long. I was so dizzy. When I took my, my Seroquel, my soothing medication, my body was so fatigued and my blood pressure was already so low that I spent one night 
I forced myself to stay awake because I had to remind myself to breathe. That was how, like, respiration wasn't coming. <laughs> um, so that was terrifying. Um, and I just felt horrible. Just everything felt horrible. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I felt tired. I felt dizzy. It was a nightmare. Um, and that sort of started this cascade of shit. Um, I went back on the Lancet and my blood pressure came back up to work right there. Um, but then I had a cold that turned into the flu that went away for a bit and then it came back. And then it went away for a bit again and then it came back and I still have it. And I'm going on about a month and about halfway through this I have developed adult onset asthma which is super fun because I'm, I mean, it's adult onset. I've never had asthma. I didn't even know what was happening until they gave me a, an asthma. They don't do inhalers. They do patches now. Um, I didn't even realize I was having asthma attacks until they were like, you know, when you get all coffee and breathy and shit, put on a patch and you'll be better. I've used two this week. Like, I didn't even know those were asthma attacks until I had something to stop it. So now I'm, like, having regular asthma attacks. Hypothyroidism. Um, basically, I have all the signs. I have all the symptoms. I have all the indicators. I have a genetic history. Like, by all rights, I should have hypothyroidism. I spent five hours today at an endocrinologist. I got an exam. I got a blood test, which, if you remember, is terrifying for me because I hate needles. <gasps> I either faint or I sob hysterically like a child. Today, I actually managed not to do either one. I, I still cried. Um, I still couldn't look at it. But I got through it. So that was good. I got an ultrasound. Um, I do have nodules on my thyroid, but she was like, but they're small, so I think they're benign. So, um, I don't know. I guess I should just keep an eye open for those. <laughs> like, not you on your thyroid? Like, should I even be worried about that? I don't even fucking know. But, the result of all this? Nada. My thyroid, aside from being slightly lumpy, is perfectly normal. All my hormone levels are normal. All my proteins are normal. My ultrasound is normal, aside from lumpy. There is basically no medically discovered as of yet reason why I appear to have hypothyroidism without having hypothyroidism. Which sort of puts me back at square fucking one. Like, well, great. It's not bad. What the fuck is wrong with me? Why am I tired? Why do my joints hurt? Why do I have mood disorders? Why do I have heavy periods? Why do I have fatigue all the time? Like, paleness, dry, brittle nails, TMI, <laughs> low blood pressure. Even, even now that I, like, my blood pressure's come back up, it's still low. It's been low my whole life. Weight gain. Weight gain gain from 53 kilograms to 71 in two and a half years. That is weird, even if you're miserable. And yes, I did lose it. Well, most of it. I haven't lost all of it. But I did lose a lot. I didn't really do anything. I just sort of became happy. But just, there's... Uh, and that's frustrating, obviously. Because not only is there, now do I not know, again, what's wrong with me, but when I thought it was hypothyroidism, there was a solution. And it's easy. You take some synthetic thyroid hormones. And yes, you take it for the rest of your life, but you take it and you're good. But I don't have it. I don't have my answer yet. And I don't have my solution yet. And I don't know where to go start now. 
kind of the reason this is upsetting me so much is because it's affecting my work. Because I can't seem to get better from anything. My immune system just won't. And this isn't like you're a first year teacher in a new country and you catch all the illnesses. This is something that won't go away. It's persistent. It keeps coming back. And it'll get better for a little while and then kick up really suddenly. So I keep having to call in on sporadic days because suddenly I'm violently coughing or suddenly like I have a fever. It's just so each month peppered throughout these months, I miss days and it's looking really bad for me. <laughs> it looks like I can't work consistently. It looks like I'm flaking out of my job. And David understands what's happening. And I, I told him everything. But today, after today, I don't know what the fuck to tell them. Excuse me. You know, how do you say... I don't know what the fuck is wrong anymore, and I don't know where to go to find out. I thought it was a glandular problem. At least I could see a doctor to see, but if it's not... Now what? It's like three separate problems that combined look like this? Is I don't even know. Is this just in my head? It can't be in my head. I feel miserable. awful. <laughs> but there's no good reason for it. So that's fun. <sighs> uh, oh, this is so long. I didn't even know it could go this long. It's gonna keep going, and if anybody watches this all the way through, I will be absolutely shocked. Please comment if you do, because it will blow my mind. Um, over the course of this period of time, I also had a relationship. Um, this girl, Erin, who's very, very sweet and very kind. Uh, and we met up in, we, we talked, we met online. Okay, keep it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, we met up and started going out and then decided to be um, to be together and it was really fun but um, <laughs> I don't know like I have a really hard time with relationships. Part of it is that I don't... Uh, well, it starts with... I was homeschooled. So, that, you know, the middle school, high school dating thing never happened for me. Uh, this is actually probably the first relationship of any kind that I've ever had. So, where other people at least not that you, because obviously the way you date when you're 12 is not the way you date when you're 21 or whatever, but I don't understand how to date. Just, I don't know, I've never done it before. So, there's a lot of sort of like, uh, what are you not, why are you not doing what, I didn't know exactly what was being expected of me, and so I didn't really live up to what I should have been living up to as a girlfriend. Um, partly was because I just had no idea. I didn't know what was expected of me. And and partly because there was stuff that I just played up straight up can't give. Like, um I take medication that is notorious for killing a sex drive. Uh which is not to say that I cannot have sex. It's not to say that I don't enjoy it. Although I've only done it once. And it, I mean, it was, it was okay. It was, it's okay. But I don't have any.
desire. Like, I don't go, man, I really want to have sex. Like, that never, ever happens to me. Ever. I just have no, like, if somebody's like, hey, then I'm sure I'd be like, okay, sure. Which is what happened. But on my own, it just doesn't even occur to me. So we got six months in and we went, oh, yeah. There's like this whole other level of being in a relationship that we never get to because I don't think of it. <laughs> so we agreed to break up. Like it was very amicable. We're still friends. I'm seeing her tomorrow. It's her birthday. Um, but, you know, it did also make me go, well, am I even like capable of this? The other problem is that my parents set an incredibly high standard for me. My parents are completely in love and have been since the day they met. Uh, they've been married, what, 27 years now, I think? Maybe, maybe, yeah, 27, 27 years. Um, and seeing each other for 28, so, and they're still totally in love. And they're they're the kind of couple, they're both kind of, they don't, they're not, they're not at all social with other people, like, they don't need, they have some friends, but they don't need friends, they have each other, and it's sort of like that insanely high level of love that just almost never happens. But because that's what I grew up around, that's what I keep looking for. That's what I keep waiting for, and it's really unrealistic. So, it kind of puts me in a weird spot where it's like I can look at something and go, yeah, this is good, this is nice. But at the same time, I'm thinking, this should be better. So... I'm setting myself up for failure in a way. Because <laughs> it's highly unlikely that I will meet that perfect match that my parents magically found. And if you if you think that my parents are like just hiding their marriage problems, no. My my parents can't lie. My parents can't deceive. They're actually incapable of it. Like they've tried. They've tried to lie to us about things and it never worked. My mother has opted to go to the complete opposite end of the spectrum where she basically tells us everything ever until we're like, la la, we don't want to know, mom, shut up, oh my god, da The things she tells me that I never ever wanted to know. <laughs> my parents have had two fights. Two fights. And I don't mean, like, two spats, and I don't mean, like, two, ah, uh, fights. I mean, two fights. One, daylight savings. Good idea? Bad idea. It is a forbidden topic in our household. Sorry. Two, are shoes clothing or accessories? Clothing. You can't walk out of the house without shoes my dad. Also forbidden in our household. Those are the fights. Those are the fights. They stopped talking to each other for like six hours. Those are the fights. Okay. They don't have fights. That sounds crazy and completely ridiculous, but it's true. They don't have fights. So, <laughs> ridiculously high level of relationship being showed to me that is kind of great for them. It was great growing up. But as someone who is now looking to have a relationship and finding difficulties matching that magical level of oh, reverent adoration for each other, like I would love to be in love with my best friend. I would love for my best friend to be someone that I'm in love with. But at 
this point in the game, that kind of like, how do you start looking for that? That's my only problem. I don't even know how to start things. Like, <laughs> I never dated you guys. I don't even know how to start. So, like, I don't know how to pick people up. Like, that's why I went to OkCupid because I was like, okay, I'll make a profile and people can pick me. Like, I don't, I can't do this. I can't go to a bar because I don't drink and it's really stupid to be sitting there and have someone be like, hey, can I buy you a drink? You'd be like, yeah, ginger ale. Because I'm caffeine free now. <laughs> That's stupid. And you don't go to a club to meet someone that you want to be in a relationship with. You go to a club to meet someone that you want to sleep with. Right? This is what the media tells me. I don't entirely know this is true. <laughs> this is what I've absorbed. What you're seeing right here, this is what happens when the media is the only influence on what I should expect from a romantic relationship. Um, and I don't really do any other things where people I don't know, like, I don't, nobody I know throws parties, <laughs> like, I don't go to school, I don't, like, all these places where people meet people, I don't go there, or I don't do those things. Like, well, where the fuck am I supposed to meet people? I can't just, like, I just hang out with my friends. How am I supposed to meet new people? Um, and for that, MLS has actually been surprisingly fun. I've met a lot of cool people through there. And I've met a guy. Okay, I have a huge crush on him. Well, not huge, but, like, pretty big crush him, and I haven't crushed on someone oh god, four years maybe? Maybe. It might be longer. I really don't I don't fall for people very often. I can count on one hand the number of people that I really actively liked um, in that way. Flutters. <laughs> uh oh. And I met this guy at MLS, and he's another first year teacher. I started mid semester, so everybody else has known each other longer. I'm new. I'm not the newest anymore, but I'm still new. And, um, I met this guy. I had talked to him a little bit during our. We, everybody gets together for Friday morning for meetings, training. Um, and I talked to him a little bit at the training, and he's, he's cute and he's funny, and. And then we had a Halloween party after work. Um, we all went disco bowling. And I was Luffy from One Piece. Because it's an easy costume to make and I've done it before. <laughs> and kids recognize it. And it's not kinky. Um, and he was working in a different location, but when we all met up for bowling, he was Sanji. And because of that, we spent, well, that and also he ended up randomly being on my bowling team. We spent most of the night just hanging out. And there were other people there, but we were, you know, we talked and it was cool and it was fun. And, and I liked him. <laughs> oh, I've got 20 minutes. How have I talked for almost 20 minutes? Um, I'm really bad at being subtle. And I'm really good at being unintentionally obnoxious. So, I always question my own, like, I'm always like, oh, oh, he's here, I should go sit next to him. But then in my head I'm like, no, Kaylee, that's freaking weird. Like, stay where you are, don't get up and leap and go plop yourself next to him like an idiot. Like, that's creepy, don't do that. So, I, like, whip around and I'm like, hi, you know, from across the room. And then we have our breaks and... <laughs> week before last, he came in a little bit late, so he was behind us. And the way we do our meetings, they're in one of the studios. They're in one of the classrooms. So some, they have stools, but well, a lot of people just sit on the floor. Um, the back row is usually stools and then floor. Um, and I have a lot of crap with me. Like, I have a backpack, I have a purse, I have a coat, I have a scarf. It's cold right now. So, basically, I came in and just dumped my shit on the floor and sat down it's morning. Uh, <laughs> and he came in behind me and he was sitting behind me. And when we took our break, someone got up and changed seats or went to smoke or something. And he goes, hey, 
you want to grab a s you can take a seat. Alright. Can I have a seat? Next to you. Okay, sure. It's like, got up in the seat. It's like, yeah, it's cool, right? And then we whisper to each other in the wings, like, hi. You know, like idiots. <laughs> look at me. Look at me right now. I'm like a teenager. What the fuck? Um. And then last week, um, he came in late and he was on the opposite side of the room. And during the break, I took it upon myself to go over and sit next to him. I just moved. Fuck it, I'm gonna go sit next to him. So I moved, I sat next to him, and he was reading Metropolis, which is a free magazine, an English magazine, and he was looking at the personal ads. <laughs> and I think I got him look like it, the personal ads are somewhat intermixed with the export ads. And I know he was looking at the personal, so I was like, You're looking to find a girlfriend? Like, do you want a girlfriend or do you want? <laughs> which one are you looking for? <laughs> and he was like, well, you know, times are hard. Um, um, and then I asked him, I was like, oh, well, what does your horoscope say this month? Come on. He's like, okay, so sure. Like, mm, okay, what's yours, Aquarius? Well, it's pretty freaking big, but yep, that's how they are. Um, and I asked a couple people if he has a girlfriend. He does not have a girlfriend. And the reason that one girl gave me, she says, No, he doesn't have a girlfriend. He's kind of geeky. Huh? Ge really? Because I'm such a geek. Like, I am. <laughs> I can't help it. So, I think maybe girls don't talk to him so much. Which is weird because he's really cute and he has a great accent. But, um. So last week after I sat next to him, we were joking about the magazine. And, uh. <laughs> I reassured him that I like to look at the Craigslist personal ads because they're hilarious. So I understand the inclination to browse the personal ads for lols. Um. And then we walked back. Because the second half of the day, we go back to our studios and teach. So he teaches somewhere else. So as we're walking back to the station together, he tells me that he's moving to Ishibukuro, which is basically where I live. So really, that's awesome. It's so great. And he's going home for our Christmas vacation. So I was like, darn it, I was gonna like, I wanted to do like a karaoke thing, and he likes karaoke. So I was like, I was gonna invite you, but you're going home. It's not there. I'm sorry, I'll be gone for the whole break. <laughs> like I know why. And then we get to the station, and we get inside, and we're still talking, and we're going different ways. And he says, you know, we should get coffee sometime. And my brain goes, oh, I've seen that on TV, that means bald. Kind of. It's like a, like a half a date. <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure, that'd be awesome. And then I said, well, let me give you a hug in case I don't see you before you go home for the break, because we don't have meetings for the next two weeks. So I gave him a hug, and he goes, oh, no, no, I'll see you before then. Huh? Like, can you actually want to see me in the next two weeks? <laughs> for, like, I've spent so much time being like, this is, I, every time I've liked someone, like, really like someone, it has been completely in my head. I've never been liked back by another person that I really liked. No. First one was gay. Second one was bi, but not out. Uh, shit, who else did I like? I know I liked one. Someone, someone from college. Who am I forgetting? Fuck. Oh. Does he count? I don't know if he counts. <laughs> maybe three people. So those would be a maybe number four, maybe number three. But, um. I know when he said that, I kind of went, oh my god. Like. He, I, not in my head. He's interested in me too. Even if it's just his friends. Like, that doesn't happen to me a lot. 
so that was exciting. That was fun. So I, I sent him my number because he forgot to ask, or I forgot to give him up to your interpretation. Now it's 45 minutes. I should go to bed. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's exciting. That's fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out. Cross your fingers for me that I get better, like, actively healthy at some point. Like, it's getting to the point where I want to be like, <sighs> I've had every antibiotic under the sun at this point. Can you just, like, pump me with steroids or something to get this to fucking go away? I'm so tired of being sick. <sighs> so that is the last eight months of my life in 46 minutes. No one will watch this all the way through. But I applaud you for even clicking. <laughs> Thank you. I promise I'll do something funny soon. Maybe.